In today's video, I'm challenging myself to make dinners for a week for less than $14. Here is my grocery haul. So far, I've spent $13.17 and it's looking like that's going to be plenty. This entire week was inspired by this jar of pesto that I picked up at Aldi. It was $2.29, but I think we're going to get a lot of use out of this. And I think that you can also get a lot more meals out of this one jar than what I'm going to show you here in the video. There were two cauliflower recipes that I've been wanting to try. If you're new to my channel, I find popular recipes that sound delicious to me, and then I try to recreate them so that they're affordable to make. Because sometimes I look at a recipe, and by the time I've added up all of the ingredients to purchase, it's just cheaper to get takeout. The recipes I found called for fresh cauliflower, but those were over $3, which just doesn't fit into my budget. So I thought I'd try to make my recipes with the frozen cauliflower that costs $1.18 at my local Walmart. One of the recipes calls for roasting the cauliflower, so I'm not sure how that's going to turn out with the frozen, but I'm going to give it a try and give you my honest opinion. I have a bag of large lima beans that I've been wanting to cook, so I'm going to use those. And I also picked up the Walmart Great Value French Bread that I'll be using. I have some green onions, a lemon, some cherry tomatoes, and then I also picked up this Parmesan cheese. I thought that would go well with my pasta, and it was somewhat affordable at $2.33. I think I'm going to get a lot of mileage out of that. And I have one can of tomato sauce, but of course you would get the Great Value tomato sauce. I'm just using whatever the oldest tomato sauce is that's in my pantry at the time. For my first recipe, I'm going to make pasta with pesto and grape tomatoes. Any pasta will work here, but I've selected penne because I haven't used that for a while and I think it'll be really good in this dish. And I'm using the grape tomatoes because those were on sale. Cherry tomatoes or grape tomatoes are preferred, but you can also use Roma tomatoes. I thought it would be interesting to see how much one serving size would make because theoretically we have enough food here based on the manufacturer's serving size to feed two people for a week. I think I normally say I eat about two servings, but I'm going to put that to the test today to see just how much one serving is. And for them, that's three quarter cup of pasta. I'll lightly salt my water because the pesto does have some sodium in it, so I don't want the dish to be too salty in the end. And then I'm going to start by roasting my tomatoes in a pan until they're just about to burst. Look at these super long shreds of Parmesan. Anytime I'm using something like this in my cooking, it definitely doesn't feel like budget cooking. And this actually has pretty good flavor for a pre-shredded cheese. I usually do prefer to shred it myself, but this $2.33 just couldn't be beat. I'm going to toast up a slice of this bread to go along with my meal. I'm adding a small amount of lemon zest to the top. I don't want a lot, I just want an accent flavor. Okay, I'm really excited to try this. I do think I should have added a few more tomatoes, but I was trying to save them because I still have a full week to go. 
and this was really good. It had a ton of flavor from that pesto and I gave the pesto an added boost by adding some garlic powder to the oil with my tomatoes and even though the parmesan isn't as good as an aged parmesan, I really think that great value pre-shredded parmesan is a good buy. It just elevates this dish so much. I love the mix of the pesto with the sweetness of the tomato and the sharpness and nutty flavor of the parmesan. This is definitely something I would be happy eating for probably three meals this week, maybe two dinners and one lunch. I'm planning on using this frozen cauliflower for two recipes that I want to try. I'm going to start by chopping up some of this frozen cauliflower and then I'll separate that into two piles. One of which I'm going to roast in my toaster oven. And like I said earlier, I'm not sure it's going to turn out, but I am going to try and I'll let you know how it works out. I'm also going to throw these pieces of bread in there because I need to make some breadcrumbs for my first recipe. I roasted this cauliflower at 400 in my toaster oven and so far it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to turn it over and roast it for a few minutes longer and this is what my cauliflower looked like when it was finished. I think it's about the level that I want it to be at and then I'm just going to take my bread and cut it up for some more breadcrumbs. Here are most of the ingredients that I'm using. I didn't end up using the green onions and also I made some fresh pasta because I remember that my pasta needed to be only cooked about halfway through because I'll finish cooking it in the pan when I make the sauce. That is very important and I just might as well tell you now that this recipe was a 10 for me and it was my favorite recipe of this entire video. It's going in my recipe book and I'm definitely going to make this again. This feels like a version of my lemon spaghetti but it's made with a different pasta and we've added cauliflower here. One of the key ingredients is going to be the pasta water to help us bind all of these flavors together and create a lovely pasta sauce. Let's start by pan roasting the breadcrumbs. This is known as a pan grattato in Italian and it's also called the poor man's parmesan. Basically it's just roasted breadcrumbs fried in oil and seasoned with garlic powder, salt, and dried parsley. I'm sure a little butter would be delicious in this as well. When the pasta is finished, we're going to sprinkle a little of this over the top. And I have to say, this was so delicious. I couldn't stop eating this. I could have just kept eating it by the spoon. I'm not sure why I don't make this more often. It's really good and it's really easy to make. And it could be used on top of casseroles and many other pasta dishes. <laughs> As you can see, that pasta water is helping us to make this delicious lemony garlic sauce that's going to coat this pasta perfectly. I wish you could smell this. I am so excited to eat this. I didn't add the parmesan to the dish while it was cooking because I feel like just having it fresh on top, but you could always add it in while you're cooking if you prefer it that way. Also, I want to try this without it first. Some people might not be able to afford the parmesan cheese and I eat my lemon spaghetti without parmesan sometimes and it's delicious. And you know what? This is delicious too. I would feel fine making this even if I didn't have any parmesan. Now I'm going to sprinkle those toasted breadcrumbs over the top and I will say that I think it's the breadcrumbs that really elevate this dish into a 10 for me. You've got all of the textures going on. It definitely has flavor and I added the right amount of red pepper flakes for me. I mean everybody has a different amount that they like. It had just a bit of heat along with all of that lemony garlic flavor and it was chewy. The texture of the noodles was still perfect and you could taste the parmesan. 
and those delicious breadcrumbs. For a variation of this recipe, you could add in some heavy cream and then you would have a cream sauce. I myself know that I would prefer it the way that I cooked it in this video because I find heavy cream to be just a little too heavy for me. Guys, I love this recipe. I hope you'll give it a try. For my next meal, I'm making a big pot of lima beans that I'll probably end up using in a few different meals later in the week. And for me, I started by soaking my beans and then I just threw them in my crock pot for the day. I was looking at these and I was like, wow, those look a lot like butter beans, which I remember my southern grandma used to make. And then that led me to doing a little research and discovering that lima beans and butter beans are the same kind of bean. Lima beans were first discovered in Peru and named after Lima, the capital city of Peru. However, obviously, they're not pronounced the same, which is very interesting in itself. And I also discovered that this type of bean is known by many different names. It's also known as Madagascar beans, Burma beans, Rangoon beans, and in India, they're called double beans. The green baby lima beans have a different texture from the soft buttery consistency of the butter beans. I added some pan roasted tomatoes to this dish along with a squeeze of lemon and some pesto. I topped it with slivers of the green onion and a side of garlic toast. I was just talking with one of my viewers the other day and she was mentioning a big pot of butter beans with a ham hock and it's true you can cook butter beans really with anything they absorb the flavor so well you could definitely add some bouillon to the pan when you're making this or some bacon or ham but i really just enjoy the flavor of the beans themselves so this is really good to me and they are kind of rich so i do like the balance that the tomatoes have in there and that squeeze of lemon just gave it a nice fresh flavor for my next video, I'm making colofredo. It's like an alfredo, but it's with cauliflower sauce. I started by boiling half of the bag of cauliflower until it was tender. I've also seen videos of people saying that they grew up eating cauliflower and pasta, basically made just like this, with the boiled cauliflower mixed in with the pasta. So I thought I'd give that a shot as well before I mashed up my cauliflower. I also added a touch of olive oil in here. That was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. And when I added in the Parmesan, I realized I would really enjoy eating this dish. I might even add in some tomatoes or a second vegetable like zucchini, but that would make a really nice meal. But I also wanted to try the colofredo recipe, so I went ahead and put my cauliflower in a blender to mash it up, along with a little water, salt, pepper, shredded Parmesan, and I also added in some garlic powder. I'm making sure to not add anything that's going to mask the flavor because I want to try this on its own before I play around with this recipe. But obviously, you could add in either some vegetable or chicken bouillon here, or the vegetarian not chicken bouillon would also work. You could add in some heavy cream. Those little Trader Joe's shelf-stable boxes of heavy cream would be perfect here because you could use just a portion of that and then freeze the remainder and that would make a very creamy sauce that has the added vitamin content of the cauliflower. This might be a good way to sneak cauliflower into your kid's diet. I mean, I know how sneaky some of you are. I tasted this and it's pretty good and I think I have about the right consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to a pan with a little oil and then I'll toss it with my pasta. And I'm going to add a little more Parmesan cheese. I tasted this again and it has just a hint of a cauliflower flavor. It's very creamy, even without any kind of cream in this. So after I made this, I went out to give my dog Misha a walk. And when I came back, it had thickened up quite a bit. But unfortunately, I wasn't filming when I had added the first batch of starch water back in. But I've had this pot of starch water on the back of my oven all day because I've been cooking several meals and you just never know when you're going to need some pasta water. So I added some of that in and reheated it, which by the way, resulted in it being slightly overcooked. However, you can see how creamy this is. 
I was shocked at how similar to Alfredo it did actually taste, and I was trying to decide whether I like this better than just the pasta with the little chunks of cauliflower, and I'm actually not quite sure. I think I might like it better with just the chunks of cauliflower. I really enjoyed that. I plated this with appetizer style garlic toast with a side of marinara that I made out of that tomato sauce. I didn't show myself making it because I've made that quite a bit on my channel and I'll put a link to one of the videos in the description area if you need to look at that. But basically it just amounts to simmering it with some herbs that you like. Eating this meal, I'm reminded of how much more enjoyable a meal can be when you put the right side with it. And I think in this case, the acidity of that marinara with the garlic toast helps to balance this meal. Otherwise, the colofredo would be a little rich, but these taste great together. Next up, I'm making a bean salad. I already have this small Italian dressing that I picked up the other day just for times like this where I don't feel like making my own dressing. And I thought I would quickly just throw it together with my green onions and tomatoes. I also added in some dried cilantro and this was so good. I love this. I couldn't stop eating this even though I wasn't hungry. I also thought it would be fun to try this with some olives because I already had some in the fridge and that really hit the spot as well. Trying to think of what else besides olives that's less expensive that you could throw in here. Butter beans are so rich that they need all of those things to help balance them out. You could also add in some Persian cucumbers for some crunch, but this was a huge win. I really enjoyed this, and I'm sure it's even better after sitting in the fridge for a while. Since I had more beans left over, I was thinking about making a version of the Italian dish of white beans on toast. I made these on my channel before, but in that dish I used cannellini beans, and I think these beans with their soft buttery texture would be perfect in that dish. Plus I have pesto, which I think would be a nice base on top of the toasted baguette. And these beans are so soft and creamy. I think this is gonna really work well. And to balance that out, I'm gonna to top them with some pan-roasted tomatoes. I liked this much better than the last beans with toast that I made. I think these beans are perfect in this dish, and I also like that pesto. Everything here just really went well together and complemented each other. I should have put a little olive oil over the top and maybe another squeeze of lemon, but this just works. It was super filling, and I would make this any day of the week. I also realized that I have the ingredients to make a Lebanese butter bean salad, so I thought I might as well toss that together. It just calls for some sliced onions, some olive oil, lemon, and a little bit of garlic, and the normal recipe calls for chopped garlic. I'm just going to use my garlic powder. Um, I do have some fresh garlic, but we didn't have that in the haul, so I'm going to use the powder. And also, sometimes when you're adding in chopped garlic, for me, it's just a little too much of a bite, and so sometimes I like to add in the powder, so I think that that'll be fine here. I was also thinking that a little red pepper flakes might be nice here, but for now, I'm just going to try it the way the normal recipe uh, calls for it. This was refreshing. I was surprised how much lemon was required in just a small amount of butter beans because they are so rich. So I had to go back in and add a little more. I also added in some tomatoes here just to give it a fair shot competing this with the other one that I made earlier with the Italian dressing. And overall, I did like the one with the Italian dressing a little bit more, but this was still good and I would definitely make this again. That concludes another video. I hope you liked this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.